was going to be a first. See all the sea lions behind me? I'm tied up to a kelp bed up this sea lion rookery offshore, west coast of Vancouver Island. I've been up since four in the morning. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what time it is, one o'clock or something now. Caught a dozen fish. But I didn't keep any. What I was trying to do was, I was trying to uh, catch a large fish, like 25 pounds plus, and I made up a harness. It's gonna slip over like a sock and hold a GoPro over its head and then tie a, a main line on the fishing rod onto the back of the GoPro and just let him free spool and let him make a video for me. And it took me about a dozen fish till I finally got the right one. Great big 25 pound plus fish. Got it on, it was sitting perfect. Then I let him, went to let him go out of the net with the GoPro and the harness and the GoPro caught on the net and he slipped out of the harness. <laughs> Nobody's ever done that before, but I'll make it happen. Now let's just see if I can share anything on here. It's so bright. I don't know if I can be able to see this. See the emails, but I'll try. Um, all right, I think I can, I can. I think I can just make this out. Right? I think I give it a go. And I'm taking a break. I got a bunch of people coming, and as soon as I get into shore, it's going to be uh, chaos. I'm probably not going to get any sleep in a few days. I'm gonna get a cup of some of these while I'm sitting here taking a break from the madness out here. In the suburbs, question mark. Alright, I gotta I gotta move into the shade. Yeah, I gotta do it. In the suburbs, question mark. Alright. Hello sir. After some thought I've decided to share my story as my family doesn't believe me has accused me of being high, etc. This made, me realize, this made me realize truly what those have had to face-to-face -face encounters must feel and what you're working to accomplish. And yes, How to Hunt has quickly become my favorite channel. I look forward to every story. Thank you. Growing up, I lived in the Russian River, or NorCal, for a few years as a kid and spent my days running in the redwoods and playing on the river. I never saw a thing or felt threatened. That's what makes this encounter especially odd to me. I'm from the city of San Francisco, California, but I've lived in the valley town of South San Francisco in San Mateo County, which is two cities from San Francisco. There's truly no relation for the last 15 years. I live in the suburbs of this little town on the hillside. It's truly magical. Little neighborhood with cul-de-sacs, cul-de-sacs, lots of trees and motion sensor lighted walkways between the housing tracks. My home is a few miles from the bay on one side and a few more miles from the ocean on the other side of the hill and is said to have been Ohlone native lands. I've seen coyotes, possums, lots of raccoons, skunks, hawks, and my first deer, etc. outside my home. There are still large tracts of trees in the surrounding area. At night, after hours, the streets of my home are absolutely dead and often blanketed in fog. One night long ago, I stepped onto my back porch for a smoke. It was one of those quiet nights. I stood there looking across the walkway towards the next house about 100 feet away. My gaze wandered to the small stand of pines next to the house. There were about four of them, the largest about five feet across. As I was looking at the trees, I saw what can only be described as a classic outline of a Bigfoot head and shoulders peeking out from behind the largest tree. Right as I noticed it, and probably the only reason I noticed it, as it moved, it ducked behind the tree and was gone. I've been looking right at it when this happened. It wasn't corner of the eye right in front of me. I quickly put out my smoke while never looking away and I said out loud, I see you, with no response. So I got back inside the house very befuddled. I peeked back out the window watching and waiting and saw nothing more. The next day I went out and looked closer at that big tree in the ground around it. I saw no tracks but realized the ground on the far side of the tree dropped about three feet lower than the near side making me realize the head of what I saw must have stood at least eight feet from the ground. I tried not to let it bother me, but as I return from my night job every night, I am forced to look at the small stand of trees. I can't help but have my head on a swivel as I make my way safely into the house. I've never heard any screams, tree knocks, etc. Just that one experience, but it was enough to stop me from walking my dog after dark. I always felt me and my American Staffordshire Terrier could manage a coyote if we encountered it, but I have no interest in meeting whatever was in that dark at night. I'm not prone to flights of fancy, but I'm a believer that honesty is the best policy. Never thought I would need a place to share such a mild experience as I am forced to be out there a stone's throw away 
throw from those trees at night on my return home. It's become a reoccurring memory, and I'm thankful for a way to share it without being judged. Thank you. Hey, man, thank you for sending that in. And I will bet you somebody is going to send in something uh, very similar. I'm not familiar with that area myself, but I'm sure lots of people here are. Some people here. I mean, over 7 million views a month combo, this from the other channel. Somebody from there has uh, heard, heard or seen something. I'll put money on it. If one person has, someone else has. That's the way I feel about it. I'll tell you what, it feels good to sit down. But on my feet, battling this damn boat all by myself on the gear and the weeds and the fish and the waves. Everybody says fishing is a relaxing thing, but I'll tell you what, fishing out here isn't, isn't that relaxing of a thing to do. It beats the crap out of you head to toe. Listen to this one. My second encounter with a Bigfoot type creature. This happened in the late summer 85. Me and some friends were supposed to meet out to a place we used to go to and hang out by the Kalamazoo River and have a fire and drink beer. I ate supper and left for home and headed out to the tree, as we called the place. I got there about 7 p.m. and no one was there, so I just started gathering firewood. After gathering some firewood for about an hour, I took a break and went out on the half of the tree, which had been struck by lightning and had fallen across the river. I sat and enjoyed the beauty of the area. I noticed the sun was just over the tree line and it would be getting dark soon. None of my friends had shown up, so I figured I'd been, I'd been stood up. I went back onto the land and walked up by the back of the big split oak tree to take a pee. I was peeing, and all of a sudden, I got this creepy feeling someone or something was watching me. The hair on my neck stood up. I stopped peeing and turned around and looked down the game trail, and I saw this huge thing all covered in dark hair. It was very wide, head sat on the shoulders. It was maybe 20 to 30 feet away, standing by a dead tree next to the trail. I cannot believe what I was seeing. So I walked toward it, probably hoping it would just turn into the ordinary object that made sense. I walked maybe three steps toward it, and it backed up the same. Then I got scared and backed up to where I was standing, and it came forward to where it originally was. Yeah, it's going to be creepy as shit. As it came forward, it stepped on a stick that went snap. That is when reality struck, and I knew I was looking at something. I must have been in shock, because it seemed like I was standing there looking at this thing for quite a while. Then I finally snapped out of it and I ran up the hill onto the railroad tracks and got out of there. It was almost dark when I got up on the tracks. When I first seen it, the sun was on the top of the trees. A lot of time went by, I cannot explain. And that is the end of the story, Randall. Thanks for saying that, man. And uh, I'll bet you don't, not a day goes by you don't think of that. Right? I'm looking at the West Coast Trail of Vancouver Island right now. I'm fairly remote. You know, where I sit right now, you can't, you can look from one end of land all the way to the other end, and there isn't one sign of humans in view. It's just all rugged West Coast beaches and forest. And I've probably seen about 20 bears this morning. It's funny, you can't help it. You know, after you've seen one of these things, you can't help but scan the beach at first light every time you come out here, or even during the day, like right now. And you wonder if you're going to see one run across the beach or stand there like so many people have around here. But anyway, thanks again for sending that one in, man. You're not the only one. I hope sharing it helped you. This happened to me. Steve, please, I want to stay anonymous. I grew up hunting and fishing and reading hunting magazines. I always read the article, This Happened to Me. At the age of 18, I was snatched up by the government, put in my four years. They dumped me out in Louisiana in the 70s. I'm guessing that meant you went into the forces. There I made friends where we liked all the same things. When hunting season opened, we were all together camping and hunting. It was the second week in squirrel season. My best friend and I ended up hunting a high line bordering a large swamp. We were already unloaded. We were early, unloaded the ATVs and headed up to the high line, crossed the other side. As we split up, I told him to be out at 1230. I followed the high line and found a place to stash the ATV camoed my face and loaded and put on my boonie hat and headed down to and crossed a small slough. Then up the next ridge. The brush was thick, so I found a big tree to dig in and wait for light. It was hot and muggy, but could feel the cool air from the swamp. It's not far away. Just as it turned light, the leaves and limbs were moving. I muttered, 
let's get it on. Went down on all fours, duck walking, trying to get close in for a shot. And this sound started to my right and then left, up and then down. I see a flash of red, red-brown. I thought fox squirrel. Then it went quiet, dead still. I sat for at least 10 minutes scanning the trees. Then more movement closer to the slough. I again made my way closer, creeping through the brush, then nothing. It went quiet. It started again, limbs moving, leaves rustling. I turned around and made my way back from tree to tree along the slough, keeping my eyes moving. Then grunting slash growling started. Oh my god. I thought, okay, well, bore. So I moved faster, looking back to see what was coming. I made it back to the big tree that I first dug in at. If it was a boar, I'd unloaded and put in a number four shot, three inch mags in, and slowly closed the chamber. The roar got louder. That ain't no boar. Then the tree started shaking. It was the whole damn tree. The smell, it was so heavy, I could taste it. I jumped up and made a break for the slough, with whatever it was, felt right behind me. When I hit the slough, I tripped, face down, and my gun went in the mud. When I got up, the roar was gone. Then cackling, like loud chickens coming from four different places. I was exhausted and lost all control of my body functions. I made it to the ATV where my friend was waiting. He asked, what the hell happened to you? What were you doing? Did you hear me shoot? It was 1.30. While laughing, I had my gun to him with, while starting up and said, let's get out of here. He passed me back my gun and we took off. Didn't stop till we got to the truck. I could hardly drive. My friend kept asking what the hell happened, so I tried to tell him, and the more I said, the harder he would laugh. He thought I was nuts. And used to say he told everyone I knew and then some. That was kind of shitty. After listening to your channel and the experiences of other people, I understand why it's kept quiet. The roar, the confusion and dread, the loss of time was projected as a defense mechanism. They just wanted me to leave, go away. This all took place within a 60 by 60 meter area, and it seemed like an hour when it was close to four. I've been scared before, but nothing like that. It's taken me a long time to tell anyone, you being the second. Sorry about your loss of a good friend, I know the feeling. Thank you for the platform. This happened to me, Bob. Yeah, that fright's not a good thing, Bob. Um... I hope sharing it here with everybody here through me helped. God, I think I got some salt in my eye from my bait. Uh, the ridicule, man. I wonder how many people that have ridiculed others turned around and had their own terrifying experience after and had to eat that, eat that sandwich. It's not a good thing. These guys are pretty noisy, aren't they? This is uh, definitely a first ever for a backdrop for sharing emails, I'll tell you. Uh, hopefully it works out. Gosh, my eyeballs are burning. All right. It's titled Answers. And I need to swivel to get more shade here. Hello, Steve. Really appreciate your channel. I'm a recent subscriber and share the same views as you and a lot of your subscribers. I do not believe in the subject matter until my wife and I were of 26 years were hunting several years ago in the Angelina National Forest in Texas. We were pig hunting at night, and it was cold for this part of the country. 16 or 17 degrees Fahrenheit and very early quiet. Very eerily quiet. Then out of nowhere near the old growth timber, which is as the crow flies, about an eighth of a mile at the most, loudest, we're about an eighth of a mile the most, <clears throat> then out of nowhere, near the old growth timber, which is as a crow flies, we were about an eighth of a mile. The most powerful, loudest scream, growl, roar that lasted for about 15 seconds came from what I can only describe from the depths of hell. I turned to my wife and said, what the up is that? This thing sounded evil. Needless to say, we left the area. I'm 50 years old and have hunted alone all my life and have not heard anything like this before or since. Looking back, I have experiences that I wrote off as that I had to have been the biggest woodpecker I've ever heard, but only one knock. I assume the tree was too hard, so it went to find another. I also have had the leave now experience with the hair standing up in every part of my body. 
so I calmly turned around and headed out of the area. I know there's something out there now. And don't believe these beings are here, but nonetheless they are. Oh, and don't believe these beings belong here, but nonetheless they are here. I've spent the last 15 years searching for answers and believe those puzzle pieces are finally coming together. Thanks for what you're doing and keep it up is for, is for as long as you can. My family and I are praying for Edgar and God willing it gets better. Sincerely, Paul. Paul, thanks for that email, man. I've said it to almost, well, I've basically said it to everybody. You're not the only one to experience that, right? That sounded a little familiar. I hope I didn't read that one before you guys, but... I can barely see the screen of my phone, and my eyes are, are watering. Like I got, I got some uh, salt in them. Let's try to get another one out here. Just a kind word, dear Steve. I sent you a story of one of my experiences from here in southern Missouri. Since you shared my story on your page, it's all been so much easier to open up and ex open up about experiences that I had in my younger years. A lot of my family has come forward to share their belief in these beings since seeing your page and hearing my and the other stories. Sure, I got a lot of your full of shit looks, but I don't care to each their own. I'd like to take the time to thank you for a safe place to share our experiences and to all the great people that stood tall and shared their own experiences. I know how hard it is. As Steve would say, get that shit out of you. Life is too short and precious to be bogged down by this stuff. Steve, I do have a few more stories to share in later time and even a few big snapping turtle tales to tell. Thank you for so much for this page. By the way, I feel free to use my name, Tracy Robinson, from the Grand Old Ozarks. Stay safe, man. Tracy, thanks for that kind email, man. Appreciate it. And if you have more experiences to share that you feel will help people here, or help you, Make sure you get it in, all right? Still see those sea lions back there? Goofy bastards. Pink Mountain and the Kootenays. All right, that's my backyard. Hey, Steve, I've been a ritual watcher since I fluked upon the channel about one and a half years ago. When I started looking for pieces of my puzzle, my encounters were told to a lifelong friend for the first time only a few days ago. I'll punctuate the shit out of it in an attempt to get across the full gravity of the situations and of course, ease of reading for you. You can call me Lawrence, I'm 44. I spent probably 75% of weekends and holidays in the bush since I was three or four. I am a 110% believer in at least the sixth sense, but likely much more. I'll try to keep it short, but before I start, I need to tell you the last straw that made me talk, although it's not an encounter, it is 100% proof to me that our minds are capable of things way past what we can even be imagined. This past Sunday I had a dream in which I saw an old high school friend's name on a list. No clue what this list was, nor the content, content of the rest of the dream. I woke Monday only to have him in my mind all day. So now it's Wednesday, and I'm chatting with a girlfriend of nearly 40 years, and she leads with, Hey, do you remember Samuel? My whole body was instantly covered in goosebumps and replied with his full name. She says, yes, he hung himself Sunday night sometime before a daybreak on Monday. That's sad. And used to say, my mind blown, no words. I could almost write a book filled with similar experiences. This one was just the latest and most effed up as it was people in my life that were involved. If nothing else, this and the other experiences are undeniable proof to me that these beings could easily possess the abilities we are hearing about time to time time again. Experience number one, circa 1989 Pink Mountain. I'm 12. My grandfather is very trusting my capabilities in the outdoors and allows me to venture out on my middays alone or with my buddy Dave whose family spends the summers there. As you know in those days anyways black bears were so plenty that on two occasions with friendly bush cops we were told we could slash should shoot every blackie we saw. Their reasoning was overpopulation and they were pounding the moose numbers as they follow the cows around during calving and take the cows before they even get out of mom. Unfortunately though, straight up bear murder was not something I could do. We did sadly have to destroy more than a few and disperse of them at the dump there on 143. That'll be mile 143, Alaska Highway. So sorry this is getting long, but the details matter. <clears throat> so Dave and I, being 12, have our own quads, packing our 22 rifles. 
<clears throat> decide to rip up the cut line that parallels 143, which goes through a very tiny little subdivision of a couple permanent residence and summer cabins. From there it carries on to the dump where we decided it would be great fun to shoot at the dead bears. <laughs> well, like a sixth sense, I don't care what everyone says, I wasn't alone or high. I was 12 and well versed in the north. Ears started ringing and dread that both of us at the exact same time stopped dead. You could hear a pin drop. All the forest sounds stopped. Not one cricket, bird, chipmunk said a word. And without a word, or look between us, we started a quads and bolt for home. But we ended up going towards it. The closer we got, the higher the pitch, the scream in my head. As we passed a clump of trees, the ring went to the right side of my head while subconsciously drawing my own, my gaze, to the source of this ringing slash dread. What I saw, although somewhat obscured by the tall grass, had the mass of the biggest grizzly. The problem is, grizz, to my recollection, don't squat down like a man taking a crap in the bush. They also don't have hands or the face of a very hairy-faced man. Yep, man. Not any kind of primate, but a man. This was not, in my opinion, aggressive. Either it didn't like us shooting the dead bears, or it wanted them to itself for a snack. Dave and I never once talked about it. Something recently made me laugh. This, as you will know, as a crow flies about five or six miles from what is now called Sasquatch Crossing at Old May's Kitchen. As young as I was, the fact it wasn't actually aggressive in my mind kind of pushed it down, and I avidly camped, fished, and hunted regularly until 2012 elk hunting in the Kootenays. I knew where this bull was, and had it set up, that there was a small draw between myself and the trail him and his bitch was, bitches were using, so he could never win me. He'd come out of the trees, and I waited until he was in the most convenient spot, and my trusted 30 out 6 dropped him. Didn't take one step. He was only 230 yards, but I was kind of pleased with myself. LOL. <clears throat> I called my boss as he lived not so far away so we could take it to a good place to get him skinned out. We were dressing him out, about 50 yards from the tree line, and at this point now my whole crew is showing up to help and drink beer. When all of a sudden, from the bush above us, came three distinct smashes that progressed as bipedal leaps or a run. Not like any animal on four, which is more like a freight train, steady crash through the bush. These stomps seemed to cover about 80 to 100 feet in these three steps. <clears throat> then, I don't know any other way to explain except to imagine an iron fist smashing through a 10 to 12 inch thick tree. You could feel the break of this tree right to your core and loud, like scare the crap out of you. What the F could possibly have the power to do what we just heard loud? <clears throat> there was a huge, about 15 foot tall rock that it stayed behind the whole time, and you could hear and feel it breathing real, really heavy <clears throat> with a slight rolling grumbling growl to it. The dog didn't say a word, just stared intently the entire time. Didn't get any of the vibes like my first experience, but nobody's hiding any, holding any firearms. I believe that makes a difference. I've never abused the outdoors, have taken more than I need, or have I killed any animals for good reason, for no good reason. I tell myself that stuff matters to them and that keeps me comfortable returning to the bush. I think it was upset about the elk, but I was hunting for food and I left the heart and liver, which I'm sure enjoyed. I keep saying it, because I actually didn't see this time, but I know all the animals it wasn't, which leaves only what I know it was. Bears don't lunge down mountains through the brush, brush on two legs anyways. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I am for the sake of ending this novel of mine ASAP. I'm not going to go into the 500-word essay everyone else writes, so stroke your ego to stroke your ego at this point, except thank you for this platform, and you're pretty damn cool, so keep it real, my bush brother. Holy shit. That's definitely a couple of uh, shit-eating experience, isn't it? Pink Mountain to Buddha. I've heard of a handful of sightings near Pink Mountain, a handful along Alaska Highway. Um, a few of my guide friends have had experiences on the west side of Alaska Highway. Um, south of Fort Nelson as well, north of Fort Nelson, Muncho Lake, um, but piles at the Yukon BC border, just south of that uh, native reserve there, there's a shit pile of sightings there.
I've driven that Alaska Highway I don't know how many times. I seriously don't know how many times, both in the dark, during day, winter, fall, summer. And I haven't seen anything goofy on the highway myself. But anyway, thanks for sending that in, man. I hope it helps. hope it helped you. I'd imagine, I'll bet you if there's other people that have seen anything on Alaska Highway, they're probably going to get knee-jerked into sharing here after you're hearing your experience shared, right? But anyway, you got any more you want to share later on that you feel might help yourself or somebody else? Share it here, man, all right? Man, the sun is swinging right around. I can't find my, my shade. My experience. Oops, nope, I already read that. Sorry. Right. The stump. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me mark this as red. Hopefully, I haven't read it before. Oops. The stump. Steve, it's an honor to have you read this. It'd also be an honor to shake your hand. You're no bullshit. I'll beat your ass if you deserve it. Attitude is exactly how I live my life. I love fishing and hunting. Steel and fishing is what I live for. This year was the worst ever. There were little to no fish. What happened to them? Fukushima? That's my guess. Dumbasses. They're killing our world. Okay, let me start in the beginning. I don't know when this is. I don't know when that is. 2011, I guess. I live in Northern California near a major river, right on the edge of civilization. I was going through a hard time in my life when I found myself homeless. I was staying with friends on the river and needed to find somewhere else to live. So I went to the hills, which are redwoods surrounding the area. Somewhere in the past, these trees were all logged. The stumps are huge, and at one point the place burned. So all the stumps got burned with the slash from the logging. I was hiking in the hills looking for a place to stay. I found a burned out stump that was hollow. So using hand tools and pitching my tent inside it at night, holy cow, that's a big tree, I managed to build a roof out of six inch green redwood logs. Then with a chisel, I cut in the door frame on the side of the tree stump. That took three days. It also took three days to put in the roof, which was on the inside of the hollow part. I coated it with plastic and then six or eight inches of dirt and needles. You could walk on top from uphill side. There was a gap in the tree. I dug inside and cleared out a lot of debris and rocks. I was about 12 feet in, 8 feet wide, and the ceiling was about 8 feet at the low to 11 feet at the high. I framed out a door made out of one piece of redwood. It was 2 by 4 feet and 6 inches thick. I used three hinges on the side and it swung inward and made a lock out of some metal that I found somewhere with an outside release that was hidden also. I then made another door out of the bark. Three pieces of bark and made it hinge on one pin on the bottom so it leaned in to close it and pivoted out and it hung on a rope near the top, kind of. When closed, it blended into the stump so you couldn't tell it was there. I kept it clean and people would walk right by, totally hidden. Wow. I put a fireplace in it and found water underground nearby in a spring and had a supply of water piped down the hill, all buried. It took weeks doing this work, but now I was set. I had running water, fire, and a roof. I lived in a stump for nearly five years. Holy shit. Probably one of the best five years of my life. I parked my truck, my truck at some friends and would ride my bicycle from town and hide it down the hill and walk up. I lived off the grid like that, and only a few of my friends knew where I lived. Over the years, I had set up an outside solar shower, probably 200 feet away in the sun. I would shower as often as I could when it was warm. Okay, now this is when the story comes in. Whew. Okay, <laughs> finally. <laughs> I was taking a shower on an August day, mid-morning, and I just finished and was drying off, when something started shaking the brush about 20 feet up the hill from me. I was standing there butt naked wondering what the hell when it started making this god-awful noise. I don't even know how to describe it. I could try to make the noise and see if, see if this texting voice activated computer can mimic it. Here it goes. I couldn't do it. I'll try to type it out, but I don't know if I can mimic it. I can't do it. Needless to say, I heard it three months later on YouTube while watching a video about the Sierra sounds. That's the sounds that Ron Moorhead recorded in 1972, I believe. So back to the story. It screamed at me twice, mega loud, 
It made a terrible, awful noise, then in between the screams. This is the part that gets me. I've never heard anybody describe it on any of your stories. It sounded like a suction sound, like a two-inch water pump intake would sound like when it's running out of water, like sucking air, a noise like a drain, a gurgling sound. And then it did the scream again. It was super loud, very strange. I threw my clothes on and not being scared, I walked up the hill and looked around. There was nothing. I couldn't even find a leaf turned over. I walked all over those I walked all over these hills and I know my way around and I knew what things look like normally. So I ride my bike down the hill to some of my friends and told them what I heard and tried to mimic the sound to them. They kind of said, yeah, right. It was a pig. It was a person. It was somebody messing with me. All the same old BS that people hear after they've seen or heard something. So I let it go. Then, four days later, I was taking a shower. Same place, same time of day, and the same thing happened again. Except this time, no brush was shaking before the awful scream noise, suction noise, and god-awful scream noise again. So here I was standing there, butt naked again, when it happened. Except this time, something starts plowing down through the brush, flying super fast. I could barely see it go by, three feet away. A huge rock, a little smaller than a football, running parallel with the hillside and doing 100 100 plus miles an hour. I immediately put my clothes on and went up the hill to look around and see who it was. Again, there was nothing. There's no leaves disturbed. Only a hole where they pulled the rock out of the ground. No one, nothing. I didn't hear him come. I didn't hear him leave. It kind of freaked me out. Again, I went down the hill to my friends and told them what happened. And again, they put it off as someone messing with me or something else. Maybe thinking I was a nut. So then, three months later, I was watching the video. I heard it, the same sound I heard on the mountain, exactly, without the suction part. It was recorded by Ron Moorhead and company, 45 years before, in the Sierra Nevadas. I knew then that I was dealing with a Sasquatch. A linguist said that, and the sound was a threat or a warning, a language. Things started coming together then. Other things had happened to me when I lived up in the hill. Tree knocks, it sounded like someone hitting a loose 2x12 with a hammer. Three different times, oak trees that were pushed or fell over near me. What were the odds? My bike tail light, and when I got to it, when I, my bike tail light on when I got to it, when I know I turned it off, or the seat spun around backwards. I found a little footprint, little footprint, four or five inches long in the sand on the other side of the creek. It was the first thing in the morning on a rainy day. A little, perfect little barefoot print, five toes that had skidded when it jumped across. That is skidded when it jumped across. I'm in a place that nobody usually goes, much less a little kid with bare feet in the dead of winter while it's raining. A perfect imprint, undisturbed, minutes ahead of me. I started being more aware of my surroundings and what's going on. I had my garbage pulled out of a, of a chicken wire basket, weird shit on the top, wired, sh- wired shut on the top, in a bag and carried up the hill about 80 feet up behind the tree and started out and gone through. Up behind a tree and sorted out and gone through. Square, flat teeth marks in the bag when it was ripped open. The lid peanut butter jars opened and the jars wiped clean. I could see where they had come down the hill. Untied the wire and walked. Got that. Walked back up. There was two. I'd hike the hill and know something was following me, or paralleling me. I could feel it, hear it. I had something growl at me, walking up in the path late at night. It was so loud it vibrated my whole body. I could feel it in my chest. It was pure pitch, black night, and I was walking with a friend up when it happened. She asked me, what was that? I didn't have an answer. She said, that was a growl, or a real loud growl. I said, you're right, and turned on my big flashlight and shined it around. Nothing but I knew it was close, real close. I was just about shitting myself, and she was too. I knew by then that it was I was dealing with and said, stop doing that and leave me alone. I live here too. Silence. My friend was a heavy girl, and it was pretty slow walking anywhere with her, especially up that hill. That night she beat me to my door, and she went in huffing and puffing and sweating and tearing her clothes off. That next morning she left and never came back. She has since passed on. I got a game camera, and the first night I put it up, 15 pictures appeared. Strange pictures. Unearthly, strange pictures. I don't know if I should include them or not. 
I know pictures don't mean anything. I've shown them to my friends and they prove nothing. I don't care what they show. Pictures can be fake nowadays. After that, they never walked in front of it again. I started getting harassed occasionally at night. They would get on the roof. They would knock on the door. They would pound on the door. I would hit the roof or door with a sledgehammer, scare them off. That worked for a while. Finally, I had to start my chainsaw inside to scare them off. I started getting rattled about then. I used to think that I was that I was the worst thing on the hill that anything anyone had to worry about. Now I started to think I wasn't. I'm 6'2", 200 pounds, 59-year-old man now. I'll be 60 this year in September. That was about four or five years ago. I started sleeping in my truck at night and would only go up during the day. It or they finally broke in one night by going down the hole where the stovepipe was through the stump. It was pulled out and twisted like an aluminum can. I made that pipe out of some really heavy sheet metal and that was corrugated. And I made that pipe out of some really heavy sheet metal that was corrugated. The kind that goes around a mobile home for a skirt. Real heavy stuff. There were finger slash claw marks in it. I forgot to mention the finger slash claw marks in the door and in the stump that were gouged and in it from time to time. Deep heavy ones. I also found a deer near there that was hanging in a tree by its head and it was twisted around and stuck in the crotch of a fork about 30 feet up. It was half eaten on one side and the other side was whole. I used to think that it was a cat until I heard on the facts by howtohunt.com your channel. The cats around here don't do that, meaning mountain lions. I used to have pictures of it in an old phone. I think they're lost. There's lots of other things too and I think this is getting too long I do too <laughs> structures like teepees little laurel bay trees they are wound around each other in strange sculptures needless to say that's the major part I've never seen one I think I've definitely heard one and that I've dealt with them a lot I think it was a family and still do big little made big little middle aged all of it and they were there and still are I used to feel like I used to feel like when I walked out the door, they were out there watching. I would joke to myself saying things like, Mom, Mom, can we go watch the human, can we, huh? Mom, Mom, yanking on her fur, it started getting to me. When they broke in, they only rummaged through my food. All my other possessions and belongings were left alone. There were handprints on the dishes and pots. They shredded bags and took the fruit. Spilled everything, everywhere. I patched up the whole day I found it only to have them tear that open again that night. I'd blocked the hole with 2x4s and screws and thought it was pretty solid. But they pulled it out and got in anyway. Kind of stacking the blocks next to the stump neatly. I'd like to share my name and where I live and where the stump is, but it was on private land, not mine. I no longer live in it, and it's been found by other people and destroyed for some reason. I love that place. Now that I know they're out there, I have a hard time going anywhere in these woods, especially at night. My friends that I told the encounters to about what happened after showing my friends that I told the encounters to about what happened after showering, they now watch your show and kind of believe in what I said. I'm no longer a nut. Your channel helped. Please keep up the fight. You got to let people know I'm going to do my part. I stand my ground about this subject and try to spread the truth as you're doing. I watch your channel religiously and have since the beginning. If you need another player on your team to battle the evil scum on the earth, I'm all in. My name is Lance, and thank you for sharing my story. I grew up hunting and fishing and even commercial crab. I hate being indoors like you. I'm sure that we went to different schools together. I'm looking forward to shaking your hand someday, brother. The stump. Holy cow, I get... All right, man. Uh, all right, I see there's a few paragraphs attached onto that after at the end, but that was definitely a uh, that was a good chunk of reading, right? It sounds like you had a shit pile of experiences there, and I can't believe you stuck it up for as long as you did. I guess if your friends are watching this, I hope it helps them. I hope it helps them understand that there's thousands and thousands of people out here having these experiences. Nobody asked for them. How's that for background sounds? <laughs>
goopy birds. How are they get going? I am absolutely exhausted. My eyes are, they're probably sunburned. They're watering. It's bright. I got the reflection coming off the boat. It's real hard to do this right here. I think if I ever do this again, it's going to have to be in the shade around a corner. I know a pretty cool spot I could do this actually, but it's too bright. It's too difficult to read, and I like reading smoothly. But anyway, I'll be back with more, all right? This is a bit of a, a test trial doing the reading emails from here as I take a break from over there with the gear in the water. Maybe I'll try again in a little bit. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the scenery, the backdrop, the sounds, the nature. And I uh, hope these help somebody.